Well, a decision could be just hours away as the FDA advisory panel meets this morning to consider recommending the Pfizer vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. This comes as new cases dropped dramatically in the U.S. over the past month. Ariel Reshef has the latest for us. This morning, a major step toward getting younger kids vaccinated could be just hours away as an FDA panel meets today to vote on Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine for kids ages 5 to 11. Done! So brave! Regulators expected to authorize those pediatric doses. Then the CDC likely to sign off a week later, possibly giving the official green light for shots to start going into arms by the end of next week. A Pfizer study of more than 2,200 children showing its two-shot vaccine is nearly 91% effective against symptomatic infection with only mild, short-lived side effects. The dose for 5 to 11-year-olds is one-third the size of the adult vaccine, body weight not a factor that reduced dosage determined by an incredibly strong immune response in younger children one two three oh that doesn't hurt at all as pediatricians who care for these kids we want to find a solution and it is a miracle that we potentially have one There is still apprehension among some parents. A Kaiser Family Foundation survey finding roughly one-third of parents of children between 5 to 11 say they will wait and see before allowing their kids to receive the shot. You know, it's just a little child. Like, who, like, I don't know how quick I will be to jump on a decision to do that. But for others like Pam Cruzy, peace of mind can't come soon enough. If we can at least have them, uh, that extra layer of protection with the vaccine, that's what we're, we're excited for. And in another promising sign, Moderna now says that its vaccines for kids ages 6 to 11 produce a strong immune response, one and a half times the antibodies found in young adults. More than 4,700 kids participated in that study. Moderna now says it plans to submit its data to the FDA soon. Kira. Ariel Reshef, thank you so much, Ariel. Now, as we wait for that decision regarding our kids, 24% of parents still say they definitely will not vaccinate their young children. That's according to a poll from the Kaiser Family Foundation. Pediatric psychologist and parent coach, Dr. Ann Louise Lockhart, and also physician at Stanford Children's Health, Dr. Alok Patel, joining us now to talk about this lingering hesitancy. So, Dr. Patel, some parents still arguing that kids are far less likely to get seriously sick from COVID-19. So why vaccinate? Is that true? And what do you say to them? Well, Kira, good morning. And the first part is true. Fortunately, kids are less likely to get severely ill or hospitalized from the vaccine. But I actually think that that's the wrong kind of headline that we've been leading with in terms of why children need to be vaccinated, because we know that Thousands of children have also gotten that severe inflammatory symptom. I've also seen multiple, multiple children of all ages, from very young to kids in junior high or high school, have long hauler COVID symptoms as well. But on top of that, children are actually a key part of getting us to population immunity so we can get out of this pandemic. So children need to be vaccinated from multiple fronts to protect themselves against severe illness, against that mild illness, but also to protect everyone else around them. And that's what we need to be focusing on, the entire breadth of it. So, Dr. Lockhart, with vaccine mandates becoming more common in schools, how will this impact the kids that have parents uh, who still don't want them to get vaccinated? Well, you know, thanks, Kara, for having me. I think that we want to get back to normal, and lots of the kids that I'm seeing from a mental health perspective miss normal. They miss having things the way they expected. And so I think it's important to get back to some level of normalcy is to be able to have our kids get vaccinated if we feel like it's is the next step, but also for our teachers, for our students, for our staff to feel like they can go into the next step, go into the school year, go into um, getting in play dates and, and activities and field trips and traveling again. So I see from a mental health perspective, our kids, our families need to have that level of predictability and get away from all this uncertainty and lots of vaccines can actually help families get there. Yeah, I'll tell you, among all the parents, that's one thing we talk a lot about is just the mental health of our kids right now. And we're seeing the effects. So, Alok, what do we know about the side effects of the COVID-19 or the COVID vaccine in children? I know we talk a lot about this and it's sort of like I always seem to ask the question, but it's still a concern, especially when we talk about vaccinating kids as young as five, uh, possibly. 
Kira, I totally understand that concern that parents have. And if you actually look at some of these surveys where parents are talking about vaccine hesitancy, those immediate side effects are actually up there. Parents worry about them. And I this morning, I actually looked at the FDA briefing document that the committee will be reviewing. And if you look at both trials, most of the side effects that were reported from both trials in these kids age 5 to 11 were some local site injection tenderness, so maybe some redness, a sore arm, but also some of those systemic side effects as well, like fever, fever, muscle aches, and that's expected. Listen, personal anecdote, my six-month-old baby girl got her six-month shots last night, and she was fussy last night. She was up the entire night, kind of cranky. There she is. I'm a little <laughs> sleep deprived. I can't, I don't know if you can tell. But you know what? This was a normal response to her vaccinations. And yeah, shout out to that shirt that says vaccines cause adults because they do. And I think this is something that we need to have an open dialogue with parents about. We don't need to be alienating parents and saying, don't worry about it, but hear out those concerns and explain why it's expected. And then obviously look at the objective data so that parents can see that not only is the vaccine safe, but it is so effective. And overall, no one would ever approve this vaccine unless they would give it to their own children, including myself. Okay, I'm listening to all this important information, but I was very distracted by your beautiful little baby girl. <laughs> That's sure because Dr. she looks like her mom and not like her weird looking father. <laughs> she is so cute, Alok. Uh, Dr. Lockhart, I know you're loving that too. All right, uh, for the parents okay. who want their kids vaccinated, how should they be talking to them about the vaccine? I mean, even my kids on a regular basis, even though we talk about it a lot, they still have their concerns because other kids are talking at school and other parents have different opinions. So, you know, the rumorville. Of course, I mean, that's gonna happen, right? We have a, a set of preconceived and pre-existing beliefs that happen and anything that goes against it, it is normal and human nature for us to resist it, to ignore it, to go against it, and maybe even to adopt it. So I would say for parents, uh, do your research. Don't just adopt things based on your small area of information and going with that. Like actually go and do your research. Look at things that maybe go against what you thought you believed. Talk to different groups. Talk to reliable resources. And then talk to your kids about it. I would say you know, talking to your kids, saying something like, you know, it's normal to feel uncomfortable and uncertain when things are uncomfortable and uncertain. Our feelings tell us that there's growth happening, there's change happening, and we like things to be predictable. We like things to be certain, and we like to keep things the same. Having a vaccine, going along with a vaccine, thinking about a vaccine, all of these things <laughs> are going against what we are used to. And so talk to your kids about it. If you're still uncertain, say, you know what? If, we, if I don't know the answer to it, we'll find the answer together. So I think having a collaborative process, talking to them about their concerns, their fears, and the stuff that they're hearing from other kids, and then really find out the information together. And I think that's the best way because kids need us to keep, to keep them safe and they need us to kind of look at the fears that they have and help them feel soothed and comfor comforted. So, so true. All right, Dr. Patel, the U.S. has reported its seventh consecutive week of declines in daily pediatric COVID cases. You know that. So how much of an impact would, you know, kids ages 5 to 11, if they got vaccinated, how much would that help in, in just keeping the number down and preventing another wave of infections? Well, that's obviously great news. We're optimistic about that, but it's going to keep, give us that extra layer of protection as the cold winter months approach. When holidays come out, people want to start getting, gathering around again, and people are going to more than likely come back indoors. A lot of people are losing those masks, so it's important to have that extra protection. We're also back in the school season, but Kira, there's also that underlying worry that we could see another surge later on, possibly you know the rise of another variant, but also you have to consider that throughout the country, all this, all this virus wants to do is find those unvaccinated communities and swirl around. And that's what it's been doing for the last year since we've actually, I should say less than a year since the vaccines rolled out. That's what we're worried about because, you know, in some of the surveys, some of these parents who are most likely to say they're not going to get their kids vaccinated, the ones who are really hesitant, themselves did not get vaccinated. That's not always the case, but it's something that we have to really pay attention to because we're going to see even more people in one community themselves not be vaccinated, not get their children vaccinated as well. And I just have to give a quick shout out to something Dr. Lockhart said. Children are extremely resilient and understanding right now. And I can't, I have to commend so many of them for actually saying, guess what? I want the shot because I want my normal life back. I think we need to put Dr. Lockhart on speed dial. You have a little while with your daughter, but with my twins, I think I need a little Anne Louise on a daily basis. <laughs> both dogs. I appreciate you both. Thank you so much.
Thank, Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.